Welcome to the Sunday School Hour with Pastor Eric. What's going on guys? This is Pastor Eric. I know you were expecting someone else, right? Who, me? Thanks, John. I appreciate it. So this week I'm filling in for John. I have some wonderful news and some blessings and praise that we should be aware of. Guess what, guys? We get to come to church next week. I'm excited about that. But as I said during my Wednesday night lesson, what has God done during this time to prepare us? There was a reason that we went through this season to prepare us for the next season of life. Think about that. There is a time for everything. So tonight, we're going to talk about something very important. This Sunday is the Sunday of Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost, quite interesting, is actually 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. So, it's also 10 days after the ascension of Jesus, after he left them from the mount and ascended into heaven and he gave everybody the Great Commission. But before we start tonight's lesson, if anybody has any prayer requests, please put them in the comments below. We would love to pray for you. And guys, even though we have not seen you, let me know that I want to let you know that you are loved, you are prayed for, and we're thinking about you. So guys, with that, let's open in a word of prayer. And uh, please join me in prayer, guys. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We ask you to be with us during this lesson, Lord. We ask you to be with us during a very different uh, Sunday of Pentecost. We will not be joining together, Heavenly Father, except through Zoom and through Facebook Live. But Lord, be with us during this lesson. Be with all the, all the teens and the youth out there, and also their parents and everybody in the Aztec Church of the Nazarene Congregation. Lord, we love you and thank you. You know what our needs are, Heavenly Father, and we lift those up to you. It's in your Son's holy name that we pray. Amen. I know John's not with us tonight, but I brought along my trusty sidekick, Toronado, who actually I wrote in on this. He was awesome. I love horses. Thanks, Nika. Anyway, I just want to throw this out here tonight. We're going to be going over the day of Pentecost out of Acts 2, verses 1 through 13. And what I love about Pentecost is Jesus said before he left the earth, he said, I will send you a counselor. I will send you a comforter. And boy, did he ever. He sent the Holy Spirit, and he ascended upon these people with like wildfire. And it was a mighty wind, and we're going to talk about that tonight. But before we do so, if you notice, Tornado has his Bible, and I have my Bible. So what I want you to do is get up. Get up. Okay? What we're going to do is you're going to walk over to your shelf right here. Okay? We're going to get our Bible. Okay? So you can turn around. You can get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Okay? You can get up. Okay? So, yeah, right here. Look right at me. You can grab your Bible off the shelf. Okay? You're going to dust it off. Okay? Do that if you need to. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and read the Word. So we'll do that right now. So we'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Follow along in your Bibles. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, like, sounding like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hear, hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pemagia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, creations and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. This is the word of the Lord, amen. Now, as I said before, Pentecost was held 50 days after Passover. Pentecost was also called the Festival of Weeks. It was one of the three major festivals, a festival of thanksgiving for the harvest of crops. This is duly noted in Deuteronomy 16.16, which reads, Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, 
at the Festival of Unliving Bread, the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of Tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. You see, Jesus was crucified at Passover time, and he ascended 40 days after the resurrection. The Holy Spirit came 50 days after the resurrection and then 10 days after the ascension. Jews of many nations had gathered in Jerusalem for this festival. This was a fulfillment of John the Baptist, which his words about the Holy Spirit baptizing with fire. This was noted in Luke 3.16, which says, John answered them all, I will baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm, Amen. Also, the prophet Joel had also mentioned the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And this is noted in Joel 2, 28 through 29. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So why tongues of fire? Why do you think God chose those people to speak in tongues? Why did he think it was important? Let's think about that. You see, tongues symbolize speech and communication of the gospel. Whether we want to believe it or not, here's the thing. The Bible is the one book that is written in many different languages. We can sing on Sunday, and even so, we were, this was a way for God to get the word out to many different nations and many different tongues. Fire symbolizes God's purifying presence, which burns away the undesirable elements of our lives and sets our hearts aflame to ignite others. Think about this on Mount Sinai, God confirmed the validity of of the Holy Spirit's ministry of sending fire. This is noted in Exodus 19, 16 through 18. On the morning of the third day, there was a thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it with fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace and the whole mountain trembled violently at Pentecost God confirmed the validity of the Holy Spirit's ministry by sending fire at Mount Sinai which we just read scripture on fire had come down in one place at Pentecost fire came down on many believers symbolizing that God's presence is now available to all who believe in him This act made God's presence known to a group of believers in a spectacular way. Violent wind, fire, and His Holy Spirit. Would you like to have God reveal Himself to you in such recognizable ways? I would. Because I can guarantee you that day in the upper room was a powerful experience. And I guarantee you that every single one of those believers in that room were changed forever. He may do so, but be wary of forcing your expectation on God. In Kings, in 1 Kings 19, 10 through 13, Elijah needed a message from God. It states, He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? You see, Elijah, just like those people in that upper room, needed a message from God. First came a great wind. 
then an earthquake. And finally a fire. But God's message came in a gentle whisper. God may use dramatic methods to work in your life, or he may speak in a gentle whisper. We have to wait patiently and always listen. On this day of Pentecost, people literally spoke in different languages. A miraculous attention getter for the international crowd that was gathered outside for the festival. See, all nationalities represented recognize their own language as being spoken. More than miraculous speaking drew people's attention. However, they saw the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. The apostles continued to mis- minister in the Holy Spirit's power wherever they went. Christianity is not limited to any race or group of people. Christ offers salvation to all people without regard to nationality. Visitors in Jerusalem were surprised to hear the apostles and other believers speaking in language, languages other than their own. See, God works all kinds of miracles to spread the gospel, using many languages as he calls all kinds of people to become his followers. No matter what race, color, nationality, or language, God speaks to you and to all of us. The question is, are you listening Is God talking to you? Can you hear his voice? Is God speaking to you? You see, when you look at verses 9-11, why were all these regions and places mentioned? This was a list of many lands from which Jews had come to festivals in Jerusalem. These Jews were not living in Palestine because they were dispersed throughout the world because of captivities and persecutions. Very likely, some of the Jews who responded to Peter's message were returned to their homelands with God's good news of salvation. See, thus God prepared the way for the spread of the gospel. After this very act, in verse 12, when the crowd gathered, they recognized that something supernatural had taken place, and they naturally wanted an explanation. So at this point, Peter stepped forward and explained the truth about God. This should be the pattern of our lives as well. Hopefully we are living in such a way that people will see Christ in us. Wherever you are, when we walk, when we talk about worship, the thing is the the outward appearance that we convey, is it reflecting, is it shining Jesus Christ? Are we are we are we in that are we in that relationship with Christ where in times of need, when it's not popular, we can step forward and proclaim his name? Because if you think about this, if we're shining Jesus Christ, think about what it says in Matthew 5.14. You are the light of the world. A town was built on a hill cannot be hidden. When we are a Christian, that's not something that we keep inside ourselves. It is meant to be given to everybody. Philippians 2.15 states, So that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, In a warped and crooked generation, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Us being Christ-like needs to be something that is conveyed in our actions, in our communications, and more importantly, our nonverbal acts. Everything that we do should convey Jesus Christ. Because we should treat every single thing that we do as a witnessing opportunity. Matthew 5.13 states, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled afoot. See, if we exploit this in our own lives, we get the attention of others. If you speak Jesus, you may be ridiculed and people may make fun of you much as they did them. Like, oh, they're full of wine. But I guarantee you, That when you speak the word of Jesus, people are affected. There is power in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter 3.15 states, But but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. 
but do this with respect and gentleness. So what is the difference about your life? Think about that. And then also, what supernatural evidence would cause someone to stop you and say, what does this mean? So when you go out and proclaim and you say, Jesus is my Savior, Jesus is my Lord, how would you answer that? So what I want you to do is take a moment, pause the video, and talk about that with your loved ones around you right now. So go ahead and do that. Guys, if you look on the comments section below, you'll find that there's a worksheet where you will compare and contrast the incident of the, uh, the day of Pentecost and the incident of the Tower of Babel. However, as I close today, I wanted to actually read scripture out of Genesis 11 to kind of give you an understanding of the Tower of Babel so you can look at the differences between these two incidents. So if you have your Bibles, which you should still have, Go to Genesis chapter 11 and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started with verse 1 in chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for the mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language, so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That's why it's called Babel, because where the Lord confused the language of the whole world, from there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord, amen? So what we notice here, Babel, which means they were babbling. They were speaking different languages after the Lord descended it down on them. Very similar to what happened to the day of Pentecost. But it's interesting when you start looking at the differences, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But what's interesting, when they built this tower, if you look at verse 3, they used brick to build this tower, which was man-made and not hard as stone. The Tower of Babel was most likely a ziggurat, a common structure in the Babylonian at this time. Most often... Most often built as temples, ziggurats look like pyramids with steps or ramps leading up to the sides. Ziggurats stood, stood as tall, tall as 300 feet and were often just as wide, just the focal point of the city. The people in this story built their tower as a monument of their own greatness, something for the whole world to see. The Tower of Babel was a great human achievement and a wonder of the world. But it was a monument to the people themselves rather than to God. We may build monuments to ourselves such as expensive clothes, a big house, fancy cars, an important job to call attention to our own achievements. These may not be wrong in themselves, but when we use them to give us identity and self-worth, they take God's place in our lives. We are free to develop in many areas, but we are not free to think we have been have we have replaced God so what towers have you built in your life see if you look at the at the sheet in comparison what are the differences between the tower of Babel and the day of Pentecost incidents God used tongues for confusion thus this is why they were called Babel at Pentecost, it was a complete reversal of Babel because the Holy Spirit came down and the tongues are understood by the onlookers and the observers who were there for Pentecost. It was used as a witnessing tool. That was drawing attention to God, not to, not to humanity. With Babel, the people were scattered in judgment. People scattered to minister to the lost during the day of Pentecost. It was used for a form of ministry. In Babel... The languages are used to showcase human achievement, but with Pentecost, 
language is utilized as a sign to announce and proclaim the mighty works of God. And lastly, Babel was not an ending result of unity, but with Pentecost, the believers scatter with a result of unity and going forth with God's agenda. So if you have a chance, look at the worksheet and discuss that with your family. In closing today, I first of all, in your prayers, constantly ask the Holy Spirit to rain down upon you. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and, I, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that when we come back together next Sunday, we're going to see that. The Holy Spirit will be in this place. Because as the scripture says, two or more that are gathered in the name of Jesus, He's there. And He's with us right now. And guys, I know that we're, we're getting yancy and we want to see each other. And I miss you guys. And, and I, I can't wait to see you again. But just know that you're loved. Know that you have people that are praying for you. And if you guys haven't had an opportunity to join in for services or Zoom Bible studies, please do so. Invite your parents. Have them join in for church and for adult Bible studies. We miss everybody. And like Pastor Denver said in one of his past uh, devotions, we can't do this alone. Just like those people in that upper room, it was a act of unity, whereas the Tower of Babel was not. So... In unison, let's, let, let's worship together, let's love each other together, and let's proclaim the name of Jesus together. I love you guys, praying for you, and I can't wait to see you again. God bless, and I'll see you guys next week. For more information on Aztec Church of the Nazarene, please visit our Facebook page and email us. God bless.